When people find out they need a two or $300 TPMS scanner to do this job, that's usually when they give up. But keep watching, because I got some options for you. If you're watching this video, it means you probably have this light on your dashboard, which generally means you just need to pump up your tires. But if you've tried that already and the light is still on your dashboard, well, chances are you probably have a tiny little dead battery in one of your tires. In my experience, a shop is gonna charge you $100, $150 per wheel to fix this problem. And that's on a job that requires parts that you can get yourself for as little as $20. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose the TPMS sensors in the wheels, which is what that light on your dash is all about, how to determine which one of your wheels has the dead sensor, how to replace it, and how to reprogram the new sensor at little or no cost. And if you don't know what I mean by reprogram, stick around, we're gonna get into it. Now, just as a side note, before you get carried away ripping sensors out of your wheels, you do wanna confirm that you actually do have the right pressure in your tires. So you wanna use a good tire gauge, and confirm that all the tires are actually at the pressure that they're supposed to be. Now, different tires run at different optimal pressures. So most cars have a way that you can tell the car what the pressures of the tire is supposed to be. So once you've filled up the tires with a gauge, you know that they're at the right pressure, you wanna either access the menu of your car or sometimes like this one, there's a physical button you can hold down to calibrate the car to the pressure that the tires are at currently. That way, if the tire pressure ever drops too far below that level, it will trigger the TPMS light on your dash. Sometimes just recalibrating that system is all you need and the light goes away without having to replace any sensors. Now with this car, uh, that calibration did not take care of the light on the dash. So I'm pretty sure there's at least one bad sensor on this car somewhere. We just gotta figure out where it is. Now there's a few ways you can tell which sensor is bad in your car. First, if you've got a fancy enough system, sometimes it'll just tell you right on the dash uh, which sensor is having the problem. Um, next, if you use an OBD2 scanner, so just a normal diagnostic scanner, a lot of them read the TPMS data and will tell you which scanner is bad. Tire pressure sensor number three, which is a code C1503. So I got online really quick and checked that code and it is a fault with the right rear wheel sensor. So I know that's my problem. So the only issue with using a diagnostic scanner um, to figure out which sensor is bad is that while you can read those sensors, you won't actually be able to reprogram the new sensor once you've installed it in the wheel, which you're going to have to do to get this light turned off. Which brings us to our third option for reading the sensors is a designated TPMS uh, scan tool. When people find out they need a two or $300 TPMS scanner to do this job, that's usually when they give up. But keep watching because I got some options for you. So if you go online and you buy this Autel scanner, it's gonna be two, $300 brand new. But for the budget mechanic, there's a couple options. First, I would see if I know anyone that already has one, because obviously I'm not the first person to have this problem and maybe I can just borrow one for free. Another option is you could check with local mechanic shops and see if they would be willing to do the reprogramming after you've done all the work of installing the new sensor. That would obviously be a lot cheaper than hiring the shop to do the entire job. The third option is to buy one of these tools used. I've seen these programmers for as low as 40 to 50 bucks used online. And theoretically, there's nothing stopping you from fixing your car and throwing it right back up there and selling it for what you paid for it. Essentially, you'd be getting the tool for free. Now, if you wanna own one of these and keep it, there are some off-brand programmers that I've seen on Amazon for 120 bucks. That'll do everything that you need it to do and then you've got one to do all your friends' cars. We'll put a link to one with good reviews in the description. No matter which programmer you get or where you buy it, you wanna confirm that it's gonna work with the wheel sensor that you purchase. So a lot of these programmers will work universally with all the different uh, wheel sensors, but others like this Autel that I have will only program Autel wheel sensors. So you just wanna be aware. So in order to check the sensor on this tire, I'm going to get into diagnostic mode and hit the button and I'm gonna hold it right next to the, the fill valve, which is uh, where the sensor is. And there we go. I got 36 pounds um, in this tire and a green check so we know it's alive. So we go to the next one. Listen, I know this video is helping you a lot because you haven't been able to figure out how to get that light off your dash. And there's lots of other things I'm sure you wanna know about cars and how to fix them. So subscribe to Budget Mechanic and we will help you out. Ooh, so this one is taking a little while. Yep. Failed to connect to this sensor, which leads me to believe this is the one with the dead battery. 
Okay, now that I have the wheel off of the truck, uh, I need to get to the sensor, which is behind the valve stem. And so I'm gonna let the air out of the tire, and then we're gonna try to push this tire away from the rim to reveal the sensor. I want it to be close to the rim so that I'm really pushing on that bead, but I don't want it to hit the uh, metal, obviously. Boom. So now we've revealed that TPMS sensor. Now I'm just gonna take the nut off the valve stem. This one's an 11 millimeter. There we go. Okay, so this is the TPMS sensor that's causing that light on the dashboard. And it has a small watch battery inside of it that, uh, that dies over time, obviously. Now there are uh, videos out there on how you can rip this cut back off, scrape out all the silicone, and actually re-solder a new watch battery into one of these sensors, and then you don't have to do any reprogramming at all. But from my research, um, it's a pretty temporary solution, and usually those batteries uh, get disconnected pretty quickly from what I've seen. So after going to all this work, I'm gonna spend the $20 to buy a brand new sensor and reprogram it. All right, so here's the new sensor, and what's cool about this one is I can actually detach the sensor from the valve stem, so it makes it a lot easier to install this. Uh, you'll notice that this one that we took out had a nut on it holding it in. This one does not have a nut, it just has a thicker rubber stem that has to basically be forced through the hole. They make a special tool for that. I can't find mine. I'm just gonna use this uh, air chuck fitting. I'm gonna lube this up a little bit, help it through the hole. I'm gonna use some WD-40, but you can use soap or whatever, something slippery. And I'm gonna grab the other end. cheating a little bit. I'm gonna use some big needle nose and give me some extra leverage for this. Mm. Ooh, All right, I'm just gonna spin the valve stem straight. There we go. Now I'm just gonna tell this new sensor what kind of car this is. All right, she's live. All right. Now that we've told the sensor what kind of truck that it's mounted on, we're gonna go through and rescan all the sensors and then program it into the computer. Relearn successful. And we are green across the board. Okay, we're gonna start her up and see if that light is gone. It's gone. Woohoo! Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you definitely gonna wanna check out another one we made on another light that goes on your dash that a lot of people think is more serious than it really is. And that's the check engine light. See you next time.